unconditionally me, a self-defining declaration. Becoming more aligned with my true self with each passing day is the goal of my self-creation. Today, the fullness of my true self lies in my potential. Like the sapling holds the potential for the tree and the block of marble holds the potential for the sculpture, my present self holds the potential for my prospective true self. I have experienced substantial growth in my life so far, but I'm not done yet. I am not quite a sapling, yet not quite a tree. I am not quite the completely unchiseled block of marble of my infancy anymore, nor am I the refined and clearly defined sculpture that hypothetically exists in my future. My identity is still in flux, and every passing day is an opportunity to explore myself and collect data about who I am and who I am meant to be. The finished sculpture lies somewhere deep within the block of marble at all times. In the same way, my true self always exists within the deepest layers of my psyche. The sculptor's focus and commitment transform the stone into a statue. Likewise, the task of my emerging adulthood is to be focused and committed to chiseling away the parts of myself that do not align with who I believe I truly am. What will emerge from the rubble will be my sculpture, my authentic adult identity, my true self, which is especially genuine because I designed it. This deepest layer of myself, the culmination of the carving out of my psyche, exists more in theory than in reality. There is always refining to be done, more depths to traverse. The sculpture is never quite complete. Therefore, it is the process of creating the statue that is the true essence of my being. This process is one which brings me ever closer to my true self. The self who is alive, spontaneous, secure, vulnerable yet resilient, comfortable, creative, and both physically and mentally active. The statue that lies within my marble is free, at peace with himself, connected to others, and lives in a state of love. These are the values and mental states that define my true self. Today, I hold the potential for these characteristics, and with each passing day, as I continue to chisel away at the marble of the self, I get closer to full alignment with them. I am my true self. Rather than saying, I will be my true self, I affirm that as the sculpture exists within the marble, as its ultimate destiny at all points in time, my destiny is always alive within me and gently guides me towards my truth. By affirming that I am the sculpture, even as my current self on the surface may still be somewhat reminiscent of amorphous marble, I assert the impenetrable link between my current reality and my future one between my hope and its ultimate manifestation. As the fundamental link between my present self and my true self, hope is my essence. It is hope that ultimately makes me who I am because it is the chain that binds who I am now with the more authentic version of myself I will be in the future. It powers the chisel in its carving by bringing force to my values. Hope brings to life what I believe in, illuminates my desires and passions, and therefore stimulates my process of self-creation. Without hope, 
I am stagnant. I am a sailboat without wind, a light bulb without electricity, a block of marble without a sculptor. The hope that I will become more of who I am meant to be with every passing moment potentiates my evolution. Grounded in hope for a brighter tomorrow, I can be committed to the process of creating my true self with confidence today. I am defined by the hope that I will feel more free with every passing year, more peace with every passing month, more connection with every passing week, and more love with every passing day. My true nature is therefore primarily marked by freedom. When I am less than free to be my true self, I am less than me and all that I am meant to be. When I am free, I act in accordance with the will of my truth. The gap between my inner world and my outward expression is minimized. Still a work in progress, I am less free today than I hope to be tomorrow. The things that hold me back from the immense freedom that is essential to the expression of my true self, my fear of intimacy, death, and disease will not consume me. Because I am hopeful, my fears will not crush me. My hope buttresses me against collapse. My hope reveals to me the freedom that is latent within the marble. I am made up of this freedom, and as my true self is diligently revealed from within my present self, hope spurs its unveiling. I am not my fears. Hope gives me the wings to soar above my fears, to leave them on the ground, and in doing so, to separate myself from them while increasingly becoming one with my freedom. Because of my hope, I know that fear is a temporary state, but freedom is the eternal truth for which I continually strive. I am still in this process of ascension, not quite completely above my fears, nor one with my freedom, but I am on my way, and that's what matters. This journey does not have a final destination. Attaining the freedom to climb above my fears while relying on hope to do so is a lifelong voyage, part and parcel to the process of self-creation. Perhaps I'll begin to accelerate as I gain more wisdom, but I'll never stop climbing in the same way that I'll never stop carving. I am driven by the hope that as I commit myself to renouncing my fears and replacing them with freedom, I will feel the inner peace that is at the seat of my truth. The fear that I am not good enough engenders self-doubt and insecurity, the enemies of inner peace. Am I too fat? Am I worthy of love? Am I capable of loving? These are some of the self-doubts and insecurities that are the greatest enemies to my peace. I hope that as I become more free to navigate the world without fear, these confused uncertainties will diminish in a similar fashion, and my sense of inner peace will flourish from within. Someday, I will be greater aligned with the peace that resides in stillness, calm, and comfort. Only in this stillness will I be able to see myself for who I am meant to be, an authentic self, free of the confusion and self-doubt that now muddy my reflection. When I am limitlessly free to be my true self, not clouded by the self-doubt, I am at peace with myself. When I do not feel this inner peace, I am obfuscated from my true self who is aware of the infinite worthiness of his inner world. For as long as I do not feel the inner peace of my essence, there will continue to be layers of marble engulfing my truth. Marble that obscures the immensity of my worth by
by representing the fear and self-doubt I have yet to chisel away. In this light, my fear, doubt, and insecurities are not only the marble that swallows up my truth, but also the dirt on the mirror that prevents me from seeing the true value of my image. Just as I commit myself to chiseling out the fear, I commit myself to cleaning my mirror of the insecurity that dirties it. The questioning of my worth will be wiped away, and my true self, in all its infinite merit, will be laid bare in my reflection. I used to believe that my mirror was broken, that my fear, self-doubt, and insecurity would leave indelible cracks or stains on my existence and perpetuity. I must believe in my heart that I am not cracked nor damaged beyond repair. I now have hope that I can transcend my insecurities in time if I steadfastly and patiently work at overcoming them by committing myself to daily cleaning of my mirror and carving of my marble. My mirror will get dirty again. Just as the sculpture is never quite complete, my mirror may never be completely clean. My life will accordingly be a never-ending process of scrubbing and chiseling that will, like an asymptote, bring me closer and closer to living without the self-doubt that distorts my truth, even if I never reach a state completely devoid of it. Through this commitment to myself, I will strive to engage in a daily process of fully acknowledging my fears and insecurities as they rise into consciousness while freely choosing to not let them define me in any given moment. This process will remind me that I am actually defined by the freedom to not be bogged down by my self-doubt. When the self-doubt inevitably does rear its ugly head, I will gaze into the mirror and clean it by affirming what my true self knows to be accurate. I am more than good enough. My body is alive and healthy. I am loved. I express love and, and feel love in all that I do. My emotions are valid. My thoughts are powerful. And I am free from crippling insecurity because I know my worth. I feel the peace that is vital to my essence. I deserve to know the stillness, calm, and comfort that come with having little doubt of my value. Just as my sense of inner peace is born in my freedom, my experience of true connection is brought about by my sense of inner peace. Only when I feel the freedom from self-doubt that allows me to be at peace with myself, do I understand my true worth and thus feel able to authentically connect with other people. When I am not at peace with myself, I feel uncomfortable sharing myself with others because I do not feel worthy of their attention or affection. As my sense of inner peace and consequent self-worth develop, I will therefore feel more comfortable sharing myself with others. Knowing that my true self is shaped by quality, connection, and intimacy, I will in time feel worthier of the deeper and more intimate connections that are vital to my emerging adult identity if I stay committed to my self-development. Without the hope that someday I will know this deeper intimacy, I am deflated and alone. Without this hope, I only have a few distant relationships. With this hope, I know that I am defined by more than distance. My hope is the variable that transforms distance into intimacy, fantasy into reality, or marble into sculpture. My hope reveals to me that my essence is closeness with others. 
and it correspondingly serves as the vehicle for my change and development. Hope is the powerful exponent that transforms the low value of my loneliness into a mighty number of connections, expressed not necessarily in quantity of connections, but rather in the impressive magnitude of intimacy I will feel in such connections. Without hope, I am stuck on the wrong side of the equation of the self, and hope is the factor that brings me to the right side. My transformation cannot happen without the force that drives it. My desire is not enough. Wanting intimacy is not enough. Since intimacy is ultimately part of the core of the marble that I am laboring to reach, I need to hold on to the hope that someday I will experience fulfilling connection if I stay focused on my process of self-creation. As the anchor for my true self, my hope is the difference between I don't want to be alone and I will not be alone. It is the action of evolution, the propellant of the creation of my authentic adult identity, the identity that relishes the experience of true intimacy and connection as its essence. My distant relationships will evolve into closer ones. I will create new relationships that bring me the fulfilling intimacy that I need because connection defines who I am at my center. Only when I feel true connection can I explore the potential for love. When I feel connected to others, I am able to feel loved in the context of our relationships and therefore express love in turn. This interpersonal love can only be as strong as the love that I have for myself, which is ultimately established by acknowledging the immensity of my worth. My love is expressed through my kindness. To me, kindness means striving to honor the dignity of both myself and everyone else I encounter. Unconditional kindness unconditionally honors the authentic inner self. I therefore attempt to validate my own emotional world and the inner worlds of every individual I meet. True love meaning it is rooted in unconditional kindness, it is all-embracing and fully accepting of any form of life for exactly what it is, while simultaneously holding in mind all that it can be. Through love, I strive to see the potential sculpture that resides beneath the block of marble, while not devaluing the block of marble as unshapely. In this way, while fully accepting the self and the other as they are, my love also holds in mind and heart what the self and the other can become, and gently guides them towards greater heights of growth and personal development through the validation of the authentic inner self. Therefore, functioning not only as a compassionate chisel for the self, but also as one for the other. I am driven by the hope that by opening myself up to true connection, I will know the meaning of both loving and being loved unconditionally. My love is a sort of vision that inspires kindness and dignity. It is the way I strive to see others, the world, and myself. My love comprises of honest eyes that strive to see others in all their true beauty, glory, and infinite worth. It sees the sculpture through the marble and the clear reflection through the dirty mirror. My love is not only seeing, but also being inspired by the world's true potential for peace and unity. My love strives to appraise myself with unconditional acceptance while feeling inspired by my own dignity. However, my love, particularly my self-love, 
is broken right now. For as long as I struggle to love myself, I will continue to struggle connecting with and sharing love with others. The chain of love is only as strong as its weakest link. How can I believe that other people are infinitely worthy if I struggle to believe this most fundamental fact about myself? Although I find myself more aligned with my authentic adult self with each passing day, I am sometimes still hard on myself and struggle to tap into the self-love that is at the nucleus of my truth. I still undermine my accomplishments and magnify my flaws. If love is ultimately expressed through kindness, then I oftentimes don't love my body. I can be mean to my body. Sometimes I believe that I will forever be nothing but a damaged and confused block of marble, not the self-aware sculpture that lies waiting within, the sculpture whose level of physical beauty is less salient than its level of emotional intelligence. In these moments, I criticize my body and don't believe in its worth. I want to change it, mold it into some external ideal of good enough. I forget that if I were to see my body with honest eyes through the filter of love, that I would see it as alive, functioning, healthy, beautiful, dignified, intelligent, and miraculous. I have hope that my perspective will shift away from one that sees my body as fat, ugly, disgusting, or unworthy, and towards one that sees my body with the eyes of unconditional love and kindness that more accurately reflect my true worth. Without the hope that someday I will know a life defined by unconditional love for myself, my lack of self-love today leaves me grossly uninspired. With hope, I know that someday I will love my body infinitely and unconditionally and therefore will forever be inspired by a more true expression of beauty. A beauty that is not based in external appearance nor societal standards of perfection. This true beauty is based in the affirmation of my body's dignity and worth, and by extension, the dignity and worth of my whole self. I have hope that my waxing self-love will be reflected in a greater love for and connection to others. By practicing love for myself daily, I will by default be practicing love for others, since all forms of love are rooted in authentic self-love and united by the common principle of kindness. In practicing kindness towards myself first, by honoring my own dignity and worth through daily affirmation, I will become proficient in the language of kindness and thus be better able to apply it to others. Kindness creates love. Kindness to ourselves and to those we encounter is a vital ingredient to unconditional love and acceptance. Therefore, I will strive to express love through kindness, and I will express this loving kindness not only in my personal relationships, but also in my career as a counselor. I will provide each client with the honest eyes of unconditional love and kindness they may have been denied or of which they simply may need to be reminded. My kindness is unconditional. It is not rebuking nor reproaching. It does not slap you on the wrist when you are angrily lashing out and say, be kind. My unconditional kindness instead says, be angry. There is a reason you are angry and you have the right to feel your emotions authentically. Albeit unconventional, this approach opens up the space for the true inner self to breathe and spread its wings 
breaking free from the confines of extraneous marble in the process so that the beauty of the true self can be revealed in all its fearless splendor. This in turn opens the door to true freedom, peace, connection, and love. Through committing myself to chiseling and scrubbing away the fear, self-doubt, loneliness, criticism, and meanness that obscure my innate self, and as I am increasingly better able to see and love myself for the authentically worthy human that I am, I will become a clearer reflection of true, unconditional kindness. As a counselor, the unconditional kindness I express towards myself and others will echo back to my clients. They will find freedom, peace, connection, and unconditional love if they learn to be kind to themselves first by honoring their own dignity and inner truths. Most importantly, I want to show them the hope that will propel them towards an authentic experience of the self. My unwavering belief that every individual has the exciting opportunity to engage in a process of self-creation that is fulfilling because it is rooted in uncovering the true self will be the source of not only my hope, but perhaps also that of my clients. My true self is therefore driven by this purpose of revealing to others and myself the hope that is nurtured through the practice of unconditional kindness. I will find personal fulfillment in the metaphysical structure the sense of purpose provides. Unconditional kindness opens us up to the hope that we will find ourselves in a better place in the future, a future defined by the dignity, worth, and personal truths that exist dormant within us today, destined to come to the surface with due diligence. With unconditional kindness, which is the chisel to the marble or the soap to the dirty mirror, the first step to our best selves, full of freedom, peace, connection, and love, is just a chip at the marble or a gaze in the looking glass away. By practicing unconditional kindness with others, and more importantly with myself, I have hope that my authentic adult identity will continue to emerge from the rubble and be revealed in my reflection as I progressively become limitlessly free to be unconditionally 